our next speaker is from Paxo, and that's Ida Vitale, and she's going to speak about um, safe handling and chemotherapy, but also in terms of waste management. It's quite hot in here, and you haven't rised anything since we were sitting down nine o'clock in the morning. Do you need to move? Or <laughs> as a, yeah. I mean, as an oncology nurse, we know that physical activity is very important, don't we? Uh, OK. Um, I will start. My name is Ida, and I have a background as a specialist cancer nurse from Sweden. I have worked many years within uh, the Skåne University Hospital in uh, Sweden. And many of those years I have worked with educating nurses who are handling cytotoxic drugs, uh, for, so they do it in a safe way. And since two and a half years I work in a company called Paxo. There is a risk for occupational exposure. Most antineoplastic drugs are non-selective, just as you know, and the mechanism of action is that they cannot uh, see if it's a cancer cell or if it's a non-cancer cell. Since 1970s, there is evidence that healthcare workers may be at risk when they are uh, handling antineoplastic and cytotoxic drugs. More than 100 studies since 1994 have documented the evidence of contamination in the working environment with hazardous drugs. And more than 50 studies have demonstrated the presence of hazardous drug in the urine of healthcare workers. And studies have also shown that workers continue to be exposed despite safety improvements. So with this, if we have the knowledge about this, we could also work in a more safe way. Handling cytotoxic drugs can cause adverse health effects, and uh, some of the effects could be acute, and some of them are more chronic. The acute ones are dizziness, nausea, headache, dermatitis, uh, and it could be, of course, uh, hair loss, menstrual problems. And chronic ones, damages in organs, infertility, it could be temporary and also permanent. And worst case scenario is, of course, getting leukemia or cancer. Reproductive effect, like fetal loss, malformations, and low birth weights on the child. The two most important uh, routes of exposure are absorption and inhalation. Absorption is via the skin or mucosa membranes. And inhalation is drug dusts or droplets, aerosols and so on. Ingestions is also a risk of exposure, a route, a route of exposure. For example, if you have contaminated your hands and you are going to eat something and put something in your mouth. Accident, accidental injections is also an exposure risk. Healthcare workers are potentially uh, at risk for exposure, and as the, uh, Cora and Rebecca were talking about, uh, of course, during preparation and administration. But it might be even more uh, interesting to know that it could also be during when you're taking care of the patient afterwards, uh, the day when the patient had the treatment and the days close by. Uh, when you're handling the blood and the urine from the patient, sweat, emesis, and feces, for example. When we are taking care of disposals and textiles and waste. When we are cleaning the rooms where we have those hazardous drugs and where the uh, patients are living. And also when we are cleaning the equipment like drip stands and um, infusion pumps, for example. And of course, during service of uh, safety cabinets and ventilation system. And if the pa patient needs an operation or worst case scenario, autopsy. Mm. 
The most important thing to use to protect ourselves is to wear an appropriate and personal protective equipment, a PPE. And this is my colleague Sarah. She is using a gown with full front, long sleeves and cuffs. Uh, she has double gloves and the gloves, they must be tested, permeation tested for cytotoxic, so you know it's a, a good glove that you are wearing. And for some tasks, of course, you, you might, there might be a risk for splashes or aerosols, then you could use masks or goggles or face shields. Double gloves are also useful uh, because it, it's an extra protection and it's also very easy to use it to simplify the working steps because if you have done something that you know this is a high risk for contamination you can peel the itter glove off and then you are clean and you have a full safety equipment under. So there is a less risk for contamination and of course it's very important to make sure that everybody learn how to do the different tasks so we work in the same way. Handling hazardous laundry, of course, contaminated textiles uh, should be handled with special routines. And of course, this is also guidelines different from different hospitals, different in different countries and so on. In Sweden, we use a water soluble bag. We put all the laundry in there and then we took it in, uh, take it in a plastic bag and we close it directly and send it to laundry. And then it's also safe for the one who's handling the laundry because they know it's contaminated and um, uh, they have this water soluble bag when they put the laundry in the laundry machine. It's important to treat the body fluids as contaminated for three to five days and that depends of course on what kind of drug the patient have had and how long time it will take to excrete the drug. Uh, in, in the urine it's quite often high amounts of those hazardous drugs but also when we are handling feces, emesis, blood and secretion, for example, we have maybe the patient have a big uh, cancer uh, wound, for example, and also for the sweat. It's important to handle contaminated waste in a safe way. And it's important to make sure it's labeled so everybody knows this is hazardous uh, waste and they should be handled in a specific way. And most uh, hospitals have their own routine for this. Uh, I think it's uh, very common to use a specific box or container with a lid for the hazardous drugs. And for the small sharps, it's, you have like a puncture proof container. And in Sweden and in many other countries, and I know you also have those machines here in Estonia, uh, waste sealing units. And um, there is two pictures. Uh, the lower one is the old version and the new version is on top. This one. Um, the waste sealing unit has the advantage with that you will have all your waste uh, airtight in airtight packs. It's hermetically sealed, so that prevents the spread of dangerous aerosols, dust and vaporization from those uh, drugs. It's hands-free because you put your waist in the opening and you press the foot pedal to close uh, the system. So that is low risk for contamination. And the specific plastic that is used for this machine uh, this uh, cassette permeation uh, te is tested for um, like the, the same test as we do for cytotoxic drugs uh, and gloves, sorry. So it's permeation tested and we know it's safe storage for at least seven days. And the advantages with this is that we all, uh, um, also know that the one who's taking care of the waste will be safe because they don't even have, most probably they don't have no knowledge at all about how to handle this. So that is very important. Uh, another step when you are working in a safe way with cytotoxic drug is to make sure you have good cleaning um, routines in the hospitals and in the rooms where the patients are treated. And also in the toilets where the pa patients uh, are treated because that is a, a high risk for contamination among the toilets on the door knob and so on.
and all the surfaces, of course. It could be a little bit difficult about to know how to best clean because there are different cytotoxic drugs prefer uh, different detergents. But a common way to do it in Sweden is to use a lot of water with alkaline detergent and with a pH uh, more than 7. And after that, it, of course, it's um, okay to use a disinfectant. The risk with using a disinfectant from the beginning is that we will spread the cytotoxic drugs instead of get rid of, get rid of them. There is some uh, detergent that also include the tensites and they could be used in case you need to clean something uh, quick, like daily cleaning for uh, infection control and uh, to make sure that the patient uh, feels safe. Practice careful hand wash. Uh, that is the most important thing we can do afterwards. We have been in contact with hazardous drugs because if we have had contact, Soap and water will eliminate uh, the cytotoxic drugs from our skin. And after that, of course, we can use a disinfectant to eliminate the spread of infection. But it's really important to make sure that water and soap is the best, best thing to use. Uh, now you have seen some examples about how to handle cytotoxic in a safe way. Uh, and now it's important to go back home and uh, to, to, to use a systematic approach to think about your own place, where you uh, work, how, how do you use uh, and what, um, make an examination, measure, uh, try to find out what do you need to do to uh, work in a more safe way. Make your own risk assessment, find solutions and actions that could protect all of you and uh, do the follow up and control and evaluate everything that you work with. And working with cytotoxic drug is a never ending process. This, so you, you need to start the circle again in, in case you do start to work in another way, you use another product, you do something else, then you have to find out and go, go around the circle again. So some summary, be safe when you are working with chemotherapy to prevent occupational exposure. Wear an appropriate personal protective equipment. Avoid and minimize exposure. Plan your working steps. Wash your hand properly. Seal the waste. Have good cleaning routines and make sure that everybody works in the same way, so you know what's clean and what's not clean. Thank you. <laughs>